Calling the roll, Mr. Schron. Here. Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison is absent. Mr. Tuma. Here. Ms. Baker. Ms. Baker is absent. Ms. Simon. Ms. Simon is absent. Uh, you do not have a quorum, and also like the record to reflect that Councilman Miller is in attendance. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Miller. I know you asked some great questions, and we're, we're pleased to have you here with us. And uh, uh, feel like you're part of the body, of, of the, the, the good of the whole of the Economic Development Committee. And I apologize for, uh, for not having a quorum to get it voted out today. Thanks. Uh, let's, oh, I actually guess, is there any, there are people here in the public. Is there anybody here with public comment related to the agenda? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, no one is signed. Okay. Yet. Thank you very much. And uh, we don't have enough uh, to vote to, to approve the minutes, so we don't have a quorum for that. So we'll move to the next item, which is the matter before the committee. Thank you. Resolution number 2017-0108, adopting the 2017 Economic Development Plan in accordance with Section 7.05 of the Cuyahoga County Charter and Section 801.01 .01 of the Cuyahoga County Code. If you can begin with uh, giving us the updates as far as you had, you got some input from some of our colleagues uh, and you had some other thoughts and amendments to this, uh, this document and we'll let you uh, carry the ball. Are, are you pushed on there? Yeah. Thank uh, you. Ted Carter, Chief Economic Development and Business Officer for Cuyahoga County. Mr. Chairman and committee members, thank you for the opportunity to come before you as we continue our close working relationship and today discuss Cuyahoga County's five-year economic development plan. This is an opportunity to answer your questions from previous hearings and report on the good work that the Department of Development performs on behalf of the residents of Cuyahoga County. The 2017-2018 five-year plan does not differ significantly from the plan submitted and approved in 2016. Uh, to outline some of the modifications, we cleaned up and further edited the 2016 plan and made the following material additions. On page eight, add a promotion of innovation and entrepreneurship to underserved areas within the county as part of objective one. Page nine, added an activity focused on education alignment, similar to what we are doing in the workforce area as part of, part of objective one. Page 11, create an aspiration to create a millennial economic development advisory council as a part of uh, the strategy to attract and integrate educated and skilled workers, part of objective two. Page 11, strengthen the focus on place-based development as part of objective two. Page 12, added a strategy to accentuate the county's activities around sustainability as part of objective two. Page 13, upgraded presentation with respect to the housing plan, uh, which is part of objective three. In the fall, we will also present to the committee our thoughts on consolidation of our economic development programs, which we've had favorable initial discussions with Team NEO, GCP, as well as some input from Ernst & Young. The mission of the department is broad and complex. We are 37 professionals. Our department supports the Cuyahoga County Charter mandate to significantly improve the county's economic competitiveness with a strategic focus on job creation, economic growth, and equity for all of our communities and citizens, as well as long-term regional and global competitiveness, which is an aspirational goal. <clears throat> to execute this mission, I have begun to organize the staff of the department around the three key verticals. Workforce innovation will be the center of the office, complemented and integrated with the economic development and community development and housing verticals. Going forward, our vision is to create an economic development center of excellence and innovation to support our 59 clients. And as I said earlier, to build the office around workforce innovation. Uh, in the workforce space to this end, we're engaged with the Office of Health and Human Services and building out Propel Cuyahoga and our new workforce service, Skill Up, uh, which I will talk about further in a moment. Workforce innovation will be strongly connected and aligned with our economic development and housing and community development efforts. Each of these verticals is led by professionals who are experts in their field and are supported by dedicated, hardworking staff who diligently support our mission in ways both seen and unseen. Their quiet efforts are essential and always appreciated. As an example of the dedication of our staff, the entire team recently rallied over the past two months to support the county executive's charge to significantly improve and organize 
the Department's files and records of our economic development loan portfolio. Working under a tight deadline, staff from every part of the Department pitched in to partner with the Economic Development Improvement Team to meet this goal. I'll provide detail, further detail on this effort. Before turning to specific questions from previous hearings, I would like to highlight some of the significant accomplishments of the Department of Development over the past 18 months and also reflect some of the uh, key elements that correspond with the five-year economic development plan. In the workforce innovation space, we developed and launched the Skill Up Service. This is one part of the Propel Cuyahoga Initiative, strongly connected with work of the county's Office of Health and Human Services, which changes the way we approach supporting businesses to meet their talent needs on a countywide basis. Two, through a series of meetings with both municipalities and capital intermediary organizations, both public and private, we have improved on stakeholder alignment, reducing overlap, and starting to fill gaps in service delivery. Three, we have finalized and begun to implement action steps on a countywide housing plan. For our community development staff successfully implemented a non-federal version of our long-standing municipal grant program, known as the CDSG program, initiated by the County Council and implemented by our Office of Development, which is open to all 50 municipalities without the tight restrictions on eligible areas and activities imposed by federal funding uh, rules. Uh, five, we hosted uh, a, a series of site selectors and partnered with the Akron Chamber to showcase assets and sites in Cleveland during the Republican National Convention. In the traditional economic development sphere, we took a more flexible approach to supporting business attraction, leading to wins such as the relocation of Sterigenics headquarters from out of state, relocation of ABB and Seven Signals operations from out of county, and retention of IBM Explorers' healthcare division within the city of Cleveland. Uh, lastly, we are about to expand on our successful SBA Muni programs for small businesses. We are in the, also in the process of finalizing our 2017 2018 goals to synchronize with the recently adopted countywide strategic plan as we prepare for the county budget process. <clears throat> Excuse me. All of this was accomplished while the department carried out a major effort to improve the outstanding to improve outstanding issues with our economic development loan portfolio. While there is further work to be done with the assistant while there's further work to be done with the assistance of a cross-functional team of county professionals known as the EDIT team, Economic Development Improvement Team from across the county and Ernst & Young, we have accomplished the following. Reviewed and validated every loan approved since 2007. And we have uh, identified uh, the number of those loans and the value of those loans. Forwarded, forwarded initially to a collection agency, 88 loans which have been serviced. Uh, additional loans are being sent to this collections agency. I have met with one borrower and will continue to meet with several more borrowers personally in the next week. We have developed a loan policy manual and are developing a corresponding procedure manual. We have begun the process of consolidating our loan programs based on the input and recommendations of Ernst & Young. We have issued at the county executive's direction an RFQ for loan servicing and portfolio manager. We have posted a job description for a loan portfolio manager. I am happy to report that we now have a solid and verified inventory of outstanding loans with systems improvements to ensure accurate and legally correct loan portfolio management going forward. We are now adjusting and implementing policies and procedures to make uh, this work a permanent part of our culture. Uh, much of this work was done in consultation with the Inspector General's office. I anticipate this work continuing through the end of the year. Uh, we have also reconciled and continuing to evaluate our job creation data, aligning definitions as to how we define and account for projects that we count. We are also implementing our consultant's recommendation to simplify and streamline our economic development lending programs. Our strategic planning, excuse me, our strategic planning and business intelligence unit uh, has just completed research into how comparable counties structure their economic development lending and associated incentives for business attraction, retention, and expansion, and how we monitor job creation. This research will inform our simplified approach to analyzing each opportunity to respond more quickly with an appropriate offer of economic development and workforce incentives. 
Uh, more work needs to continue to be done in this area as we strengthen our compliance and monitoring, which will also be a focus of our budget request uh, in September. Committee members, to turn to some of the questions that committee members had in previous hearings, committee members asked for more information on workforce innovation. The three major goals of Cuyahoga County's workforce innovation strategy are, one, to support business growth and profitability through a workforce pipeline that delivers a sufficient and steady supply of qualified candidates at all skill levels to keep critical jobs filled. Two, assist residents with employment barriers that keep them outside the pipeline to become skilled workers pursuing career and wage pathways inside the pipeline. Uh, three, uh, build workforce systems alignment among public, private, and philanthropic funders to invest our separate workforce dollars in ways that move forward shared goals and priorities and measure success by shared outcomes and impact. Department of Development shares with Cuyahoga County's Health and Human Services agencies the responsibility to take actions toward each of these goals. Most directly connected to our work in development is our new skill-up service, which is beginning to show results as private companies become actively engaged. Early reports from staff operating the program indicate a range of industries are receptive to this service, including staffing, health care, manufacturing, professional service, and the nonprofit sector. A more detailed briefing can be scheduled in cooperation with the Health and Human Services leadership. Committee members asked for more detailed information on last year's accomplishments and what is planned for the uh, next year going forward. Your packet includes a document that outlines our current five-year economic development plan, listing accomplishments to date and plans for the next year in each of the areas where Cuyahoga County Department of Development has action items. So that is this document, a smaller version of this document here. So what you'll see is the uh, strategic objective, of which there are three, the corresponding activities. Um, a larger document shows each of these activities with the, uh, which you don't have, uh, with the designated county partner. So we've identified uh, the activities where the county will play a specific role. We've reflected the action that we, and the result that was uh, accomplished in the last year, year and a half, and then future actions is in, in the far right column. Uh, so I'll just highlight three for the sake of time. Uh, under the uh, objective one strategy, create an innovation and entrepreneurship continuum. Activity four, provide and leverage funding for small business to start and grow, particularly in neighborhoods. For example, the county's partnership with the Economic Community Development Institute provides this type of support. Under uh, actions and results from 2016 to 2017, launched a capital access fund uh, with the Urban League and National Development Council which attracted uh, $3 billion in new capital via Morgan Stanley, uh, off to a successful start in investing in small businesses across the uh, county with a particular focus on uh, minority and, and women-owned businesses, and then supported uh, the Growth Capital Fund, which is a subsidiary of Jumpstart, and then continued our working relationship with ECDI. And then we continue to support the Capital Access Fund in terms of go-forward activities. And we've also, um, done quarterly meetings. We've done two so far, but we've committed to doing them quarterly with our small business capital intermediaries to talk about ways that we can create this continuum of capital. So if someone starts off with a startup grant, for example, with ECDI, and if it's the appropriate company, they can get a uh, have a pathway toward uh, larger capital investments all the way up to jumpstart for high growth companies, as an example. Uh, activity five underneath that. Utilize existing assets like the Global Health Center, Global Center for Health Innovation, and major hospital systems to attract healthcare businesses to the region. Some examples of results in the last year uh, were uh, Sterogenics, uh, which you all were deeply involved in. Uh, we did pitch that site to pitch to that company, going to the Global Healthcare, uh, Global Center for Healthcare Innovation. Uh, they declined uh, to consider that site and wound up in Broadview Heights. Explorus, uh, which was a retention project, as you well know. Um, and then Seven Signal was another company because they touched the healthcare space. We suggested that they consider that site as, uh, as a space for their business, but uh, they declined that. And um, we'll, then we'll continue to uh, showcase the Global Center as a space to attract uh, companies. Uh, one of uh, the results, which aren't on here, in November of last year, uh, the county executive and I went to Silicon Valley 
where he presented at uh, the meeting of the Minds Conference, which is a global uh, civic tech innovation conference. As a result of our trip and his presentation, a meeting of the Minds Conference will be hosted here in the fall at the uh, Global Healthcare Innovation Center. And so you'll have tech and civic, particularly focused on technology in the civic space, gurus from around the uh, world that will be here in October for two or three days. Uh, so we're partnering with um, Lev Gonick and his organization. So we're excited about that accomplishment and what that will mean for kind of brand visibility for Cleveland and the county. Uh, and the next uh, one additional thing I'll highlight is under carry out act county activities to reestablish standing as regional and national economic hub. Um, at the bottom of the next section, we talk about strategy, research, commercialization, and tech transfer, uh, support a jump start with additional funding, and engage in conversations with bioenterprise. So as a result of our several million dollar investment in jump start, uh, we, as I think I've shared with you, are now going to get a return on our investment. Uh, complete payout in several weeks to the tune of several million dollars. Um, so we are excited about that result. We have also been in conversations with the city and NASA uh, about a way to more effectively leverage uh, their small business investment and research program called SBIR, I'm sorry, Innovation Program, uh, which is designed for small companies that are assisting NASA and really in cutting edge technology and businesses. Uh, about 30 of them are here in Cuyahoga County. So we had a meeting actually er this morning where we are focused on how can we support NASA as these companies grow and turn the corner from research and R&D to commercializing their ideas to keep them here in Cuyahoga County, ideally in the Eurozone, but anywhere in um, Cuyahoga County. Uh, so again, these are just a couple of the key highlights that also uh, uh, we've talked something about placemaking. So we've done a variety of projects around placemaking. Um, which is a strategy under foster pop positive job and population growth and opportunity. And so you see a strategy focus, focus on place-based development. So I think last year in, in this document we had emphasized that so we just changed the wording really to kind of renew our focus around place-based development as a component of our office's work. Uh, so I'll just leave that as you continue to scan and, and look through that. Talked about, uh, let me find my place here. It is important to note that some parts of the five-year economic development plan are carried out by our partners or in partnership with our partners with the county supporting rather than by the Cuyahoga County Office of Development itself. For example, attracting skilled immigrants to move to Cuyahoga County is largely the mission of Global Cleveland. Cuyahoga County Office of Development provides financial support for this mission. Also within the range of Cuyahoga County's activities under the five-year plan, some are carried out by other parts of county government. For example, sustainability initiatives such as the LECO project, wind turbines on Lake Erie, are largely the domain of our separate Office of Sustainability. Director Foley is not here today, unfortunately, but is available in the future to brief the county on the current status of those activities. Committee members ask for more information on how Cuyahoga County coordinates its work with municipal leadership. Cuyahoga County's Office of Regional Collaboration leads the overall engagement between all county programs and our 59 municipalities. Within this overall framework, the Department of Development maintains strong staff level working relationships with appropriate community and economic development staff in each community and with strategic partners like GCP, Team NEO, NAWACA, RTA, and our CDCs. We have initiated quarterly meetings in which members of the 59 municipalities are all members of the 59 municipalities are invited to an open forum with Cuyahoga County Development Leadership. This is a two-way exchange of information and recommendations, and going forward will be part of a best practices discussion where we have um, members of our 59 communities share deals and projects and strategies that are working in their communities so that the other uh, economic development leaders from across the county can benefit from uh, their successes. A committee member asked for more information on efforts to attract younger, highly skilled persons to move to Cuyahoga County. Our partners at Team NEO lead strategic work in this area. An outline of work to attract skilled talent to move to the region is in your packet. And I believe that's also reflected in this. Uh, something else we've done in the last quarter, just to touch on this for a second, is uh, as a result of our Seven Signal deal, 
where we were able to track center signal from uh, Summit County, I realized that I didn't have any relationship with our my counterparts in uh, our neighboring counties. So Mr. Krause and I have started to visit um, our neighboring counties, their economic development leaders, and uh, in our recent vi visit with Lake County, uh, they mentioned this as a strategic imperative for the region and put forward an idea where uh, in order to maintain population growth, they think that a sp specific regional fund should be created to attract uh, professionals, particularly millennials from around the country. Um, and so this is on the top of mind, and they, they have even developed a proposal to advance that work. Um, and, and so, th again, this is something that uh, is top of mind is obviously our number one priority is to increase the population of Cuyahoga County. Committee members asked for more information on the action steps for housing. A draft plan has been submitted to the executive for review and is under cons active consideration. The plan is very much structured in a format consistent with the economic development five-year plan and in my view should complement many elements outlined in this plan. It is a high-level strategic document that discusses the current housing challenges, and provides strategic strategies in which the community should work to address these challenges. Of the six areas identified in the housing plans, the priorities are access to capital, lending for both mortgages as well as home repair, rehab, and new build. Tax collection and delinquency addresses the unintended negative outcomes of past sales. Housing insecurity, uh, which touches on affordable housing plus income increasing strategies. Fair housing, HUD enacted new laws in 2015 to affirm affirmatively further fair housing. Status quo is not enough. We want to address this more regionally than in the past is the outcome of that initiative. Special populations, which includes seniors as a key focus given kind of the demographic shifts in our population, but also including other special population, reentry, veterans, homeless, disabled, LGBTQ and others, confidence in the housing market. How do we maintain and increase home values and generally improve our neighborhoods across the county? A great example uh, of the work in this area that has been led by uh, Ken Surratt is a tax lien sale process, which was identified as an issue over and over the past couple of years in which the treasurer's office, as well as the prosecutor and other county departments have worked together to select a better purchaser and monitor performance of the contract. Local community groups who brought forward issues with past sales are now uh, commending the county on the 2016 lien sale. Uh, Ken Surratt is available for a presentation at a future economic development or community development committee meeting to discuss in more detail. And this has been uh, co-led by Ken and members of the housing stakeholder group uh, led by Inter the Inter Enterprise. Lastly, committee members asked for more information on action steps, objectives, and metrics, which I touched on briefly in terms of this document. This relates to the county executive strategic plan, which county strategic plan, which some of you have been briefed on, and which is in the process of being finalized and adapted with specific goals, action steps, and performance indicators. Development does currently report on its housing and community development plans and activities in a number of ways driven by its federal funding requirements and other external agreements. Of the key documents as required by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development are a one-year action plan, five-year consolidated plan, and consolidated annual performance and evaluation report. Uh, we can provide copies uh, if, if there's interest. Uh, a committee member asked about the status of discussions relative to possible financial support for renovating rather than demolishing certain vacant, excuse me, certain vacant buildings. This is an active topic of discussion in policy circles but at the present time, the legislation passed by county council is limited to funding for demolitions. Any funding change would require action by county council and consent by the executive. The realignment of the office development is a work in progress as we hopefully add new resources to support the back office infrastructure need to build a best in class economic development organization. And that will be part of our consideration during the 2018 2019 budget process. Considering the challenges we have faced, I am pleased but not satisfied with our performance and anticipate improved support to our client communities. We'll keep working hard to achieve our ambitions. At this time, uh, I'll be pleased to take qu any questions the committee has. And let the record reflect Ms. Simons uh, in the present. Thank you. Questions from the committee? Yes. Mr. Chairman first. Uh, th <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Carter, just uh, 
What is uh, the relationship been like between the uh, county and the municipalities with respect to um, uh, economic development and um, um, communication? How, how, how do you communicate with the, the various municipalities? Is it through mayoral offices or is it through economic directors in each community? Um, what's, it, what's it been like as far as the give and take there? I think it's been pretty good, but my experience since I've been here, I think it's getting better. I think um, as I move around the county, our office and our team has a good uh, rapport and relationships, particularly in the community development and housing area. Um, it, it, in terms of touch points, it varies. So it could be a mayor, it could be an economic development. I talk with all at various times, depending on what the circumstance is. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say it's good, varies, but we're always looking to get better. Do you, so these quarterly meetings are helping to improve that. that that's what I was going to say. What kind of attendance do you get at quarterly meetings? Or uh, I mean, is it is it really dependent on kind of what areas you're focusing on, or is there a time period where you know you'll have nearly every community together at one point to say, hey, this is where we're focusing as far as on what you We've guys are trying to do? Several, and I would say their attendance is good. So everyone doesn't attend, obviously. Sure, uh, but. Uh, I can't think of a meeting we've had where I wasn't pleased with the attendance, whether it be to get feedback on this, our uh, muni program, to roll out the CDSG program, uh, just to talk about um, you know, current trends in the economic development and community development. Uh, so we are trying to develop the agenda where it creates value for the participants. And so, again, I've been pleased the last two. It hasn't been sparse by any means. Okay. And sometimes uh, we've had mayors show up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and well, I, I would... Just, uh, I suppose, as a point of um, offering some uh, uh, cr constructive uh, advice, I suppose, is, is I don't know how many of, of the uh, municipalities are even aware of the importance of economic development and the, and the county charter itself as being a primary, um, of primary importance. And I think if, if um, uh, individuals in those communities in charge of economic development or even the mayors in those situations uh, kind of un have an understanding that that is of primary concern or, you know, one of the main uh, areas of emphasis in our county charter. Um, you know, maybe they'll approach, in some instances, economic development uh, ac opportunities a little bit differently, knowing that this administration has been really um, at the forefront of trying to push innovative ideas and right. uh, I guess going beyond um, outside the box, I guess is the way, a way to put it, um, because I know a lot of those municipalities, particularly in my district, I know they'd be willing to to um, uh, try to work with the, the county where they can if they know that the opportunities are available. So I think it's very important to continue to communicate as you as you have, you indicate yeah. you have. Um, but I think that's an area that uh, we can we can even expand on and do better and I agree. move forward. I, that's why I use the term please but not satisfy. We should not be rested on our laurels. There's always things we can do better in terms of communication. Um, I certainly have moved around uh, the county because I think it's important for the community to see the visibility of the uh, economic development director. The community development and uh, economic development teams are out there. Now, we'll say that in terms of connectivity, some towns and municipalities are more aggressive than others. I mean, sure. That's just a fact of life. Sure. But um, if they need something, they know where to find us, right. for sure. Right, that's uh, great. Uh, but I will say, my last point on this, uh, Councilman Tuma, is that we do want to become more strategic. So part of these quarterly meetings is to have more kind of strategic discussions around how we implement our scarce resource and not be so tactical. Right. And, and, and kind of encourage, you know, through particularly our CDBG programs and our CDSG, for communities to work together where possible in terms of requesting funding and things of that nature. So we've talked about that. In some of our meetings, okay. um, one of the things I'd like to see in that regard too is, and again, I, I I'm newer here, so I'm, you know, a little of this might might be just a part of a learning curve. But um, if, if there's ways to keep the council members informed as to when there are communications between um, various uh, mayors or economic development directors in a particular okay. district, mm -hmm. um, I think. It, the council person would at least like to have an opportunity to be a part of those discussions if they can help um, uh, move things along um, or help understand, help uh, municipalities understand what we're trying to do as a county to be a part of those discussions. I think that'd be beneficial in That's some fair. instances. Sometimes uh, I know I'll find out about things a little bit after the fact. 
And um, again, it's not necessarily anybody's fault. It's just I'm trying to find a way that we can maximize um, what we do here to, to, to everybody's uh, uh, benefit, both the county and the municipalities. That's fair. Um, Ms. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could have sure. one more question. This is, this is in a little different area from what I've been talking about with municipalities, but I know we had the situation with those outstanding loans. I think you said there were 88 loans um, uh, they were collected on. Where, where do we stand to date on on those loans those, that were outstanding that we sent out to have, uh, you sure. know, try to collect on those? Thought you might ask that. So let me just find my <laughs> great mind sheet <laughs> with uh, kind of the report that we've gotten. So there's more than 88 that have been sent or that we're in the process of sending to collection. So this report, I just want to be specific, is relates to the 88 that initially went to Douglas. Uh, David Douglas and Associate. Uh, so let me just walk through the different categories on this sheet that. Well, uh, why don't you just send? Do we have a copy of all that? What you're what you're looking no, at? No, you do not have a copy. Okay. Of this. Why don't we get a copy of that, and so we can just forward it to okay. all the committee members? Thank you. Okay. So I'll just outline very quickly in response to sure, absolutely questions. So uh, for, again, for this initial eighty-eight. So uh, actually, he has eighty-seven on this sheet. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about ten different categories. Mm -hmm. Uh, to describe the actions that he and his firm have taken to satisfy these loans. Recall or procured a peer collectible, so he's got a number, verbal contact, civil judgment, secure, bankrupt, deceased or out of business. So it just kind of gives you the status. A couple of them have gone through the court process, and it looks like uh, one is in actually Parma, a uh, business in Parma that was in foreclosure. So it's going through the process so that it can go back on the tax rolls and we can get a little bit of money back from that or the files closed and so we'll send these to okay. uh, update uh, right. so there's an ongoing rolling process, process around um, what we're sending to collections and so okay you know, kind of yeah I, I think it's I think it's very important to keep a uh, council abreast of those transactions as they move forward um, okay. want to make sure that we, we stay on top of that stuff and uh, County gets the money that it's entitled to. Yeah. So appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, I'm sorry. Never mind. Well, uh, before we go to the other, as long as we've got that open, I was going to open it up later on. But uh, as long as we got the loans open up, why don't we? We'll stay on that, and then we can bounce back and forth. But we'll stay on the loan aspects. Were there personal guarantees on any of those loans that uh, you had check boxes all the way across? I didn't hear one for personal guarantee. Yeah, I'd have to. Uh, these are organized not by specific loan, by, but by loan program, the way he's organized them. So I don't know the answer to that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Before you send that to us, we'd like to know, uh, because one of the things that this committee regularly asks, if you're, if you're borrowing money from the county, tell us how committed you are and if there's a personal guarantee in regards to that loan. And so now it's time for that day of reckoning if they fail to pay. Uh, so we would like to know what uh, the vendors have, or what they the uh, loans have in regards to that and I'll, I'll just stay on the, on the loans aspects what is the total number of loans that we you say we've identified hundred percent now through all the due diligence of everybody yeah. how many loans are there so let me uh, walk through uh, my sheet here that uh, the county executive and I presented uh, a couple of weeks ago with the inspector general so total active loans between 2007 to 2017. Approved between 2007 uh, present day are 242 loans. 242 that are outstanding. Right. Loans that are open, 154 loans. And all of these, now I'm sharing this because last time we've had this team, uh, this, this edit team that I've talked about kind of really scrutinized. So how we got to this, which took an enormous amount of work, we've gone back and looked at every authorization for a loan, whether it be BOC or council. Uh, so that's been the starting point. So we've gone back through files and recreated and then looked at what has been dispersed by the county and then gone through our loan files to kind of triangulate and create and, and repopulate and validate that everything is correct from what was in the legislation to what's in the loan file, et cetera. So we still have a bit of work to do, but this is what we uh, have um, validated to date. Okay, of the 242, I'd like you to go back and identify how many of those principals were in any of those loans or corporations that have been indicted or were involved with the corruption scandal. Okay. 
Okay. Which should be fairly yeah. straightforward. I think, uh, and I do know there's General some loans. Has, uh, there are some that are in that, in that category. Yeah, I think he's identified uh, a few. Okay. Well, I'd like to you know, yeah, minimum, okay. identify everyone that, that falls into that category. So just to make sure I have the homework here, Mr. Chairman, so you want to, any company or individual have, or individual has received a loan that was involved in a corruption scandal. Mm -hmm. okay. And the personal guarantees that are associated with the loans. And you've told us that we, that 242 represents 100 percent from 17, from 07 to 17. Is that correct? Yeah, let me keep going down the, the list here. So the 154 of those loans are open, 34 have been f terminated, and then loans with status to be determined around 50. I mean 34 then, terminated as in they paid 100% of their obligation closed, to us? Or they're closed out, yeah. So I'll get you well, the exact definition okay. of that. Uh, of, the 400, of the 242, tell us how many are current with their loans or have been paid off. Let me get back to you because I don't want to misread this sheet. That's okay. Now. You don't have to read it now. I'm not okay. looking for that. Okay. I want to know. This is fortunately, or unfortunately, because Pandora's box got opened here. Or we're, I was envisioning this would be a different meeting, but seeing how that was listed as as an, an achievement by a specific example, uh, according to Mr. Miller, based on Mr. Miller's question at the last meeting, I'd like to make sure we have this nailed and buttoned down tight. And if I'm missing something, I know that. Mr. Miller, Ms. Simon will, will pick up on it in regards to these loans. Um, so that's our total number, outstanding, current payable, uh, they're paid off. Those that, uh, uh, that, are, that are still making current payments is fine. Personal guarantees and anybody who was involved in the corruption scandal. Uh, Ms. Miller okay. or Ms. Simon, do you have questions in regards to the loan? loan uh, just staying with the loan so we can keep that nice and tight around that? Yeah, Mr. Miller? Because this was the, the only, reason why I'm asking is because this was cited as seven points of, of success. So I want to just make sure yeah. we're, we're nailing this down. Well, I, okay. Mr. Chairman, Director, uh, my question regarding the loan, loan portfolio is whether there is a pattern where uh, where more recent loans are, are current and non non non-problematical and, and, and where all or most of the uh, problem loans are, are loans that are pretty far in the past or, or is it the opposite where the problem loans are, uh, are distributed chronologically across the board? For definitions, yeah. can you define current so he's not having a guess as to what you mean since the new county government? Is that, is that, is that a... Or do you well, want to... I I would uh, I would make three categories. One one would be uh, loans in the last two years, and the second category would be uh, older than two years, but under the new county government, and and the and the third category would be under the prior government. Okay, uh, so that <laughs> that's your 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 legacy. The prior right. legacy right. to the new government and then everything before. Is that, is that a simple so, so way to say it? Yeah. My question was, uh, uh, Mr. Miller, was I think you used the word problem. And so just unpack that for me a little bit when you say problem loans but, from your by standpoint. A, by a problem loan, I mean a loan where, uh, where the, the, uh, the payment requirements are not currently under compliance. Yep. Uh, I'd say that... Um, most of them, most of the problems that were identified in the IG's uh, review were historical. Uh, we do have some work to do uh, under this administration while they were structured properly, and most of them had, uh, you know, uh, sufficient guarantees. There are instances where uh, uh, the team has not billed, and so that those are the things we've got to clean up. And so those are the borrowers that I'm meeting with personally to really sit down and understand was there a billing problem on our end? Was there an expectation on your end where there's some kind of gray area that requires you know, my personal engagement? So I met with one borrower that was uh, actually preceded uh, the, the, uh, this administration, and there's a couple of others. So <clears throat> the structure is stronger, would be my view. Uh, in recent history, uh, some of our billing execution 
is, is, can be strengthened, and that is one of the reasons why we're considering loan servicing outsourcing. And uh, regardless of how that lands, um, we have posted a uh, job description for a professional to be a loan portfolio manager who will have the specific responsibilities of invoicing and uh, collections uh, in the event that you know, loan servicing um, does not materialize the way we want it to. And so we're also going to segregate those duties from the loan origination so that there is a, some resources that are doing nothing but servicing and collection and borrower engagement. Mr. Chairman, Director, uh, let me tell you what I think I heard and, and uh, whether it's right. It, it sounds to me like you're saying that there are uh, problems across the board chronologically in, in terms of both loan structuring and, and, uh, and, and collection process, but that, uh, that in the most recent time frame, the, the amount and severity of these problems are less so than, than in the earlier time frames. Is that a, is that a correct statement? I, I uh, with my, with your permission, let me just kind of restate what I what I thought I said was that I would say that underwriting and structuring the loans there were probably more problems prior to recent history, but in terms of the execution around servicing uh, and uh, invoicing loans, those problems have persisted uh, in the current day. And some of that is because of a lack of resources. Uh, some of that is just a lack of yeah resources and. Uh, capabilities, and so we're going to fix that going forward. <clears throat> okay. But the good news is we have stronger data than we had six months ago. So because we created this uh, special team to assist my team with going back and validating loans, so we've gone loan by loan, and that's a process which is continuing to a very, you know, an extraordinary amount of work to go back and recreate these loans, validate the data, make sure that the terms are correct, and that the Things are being invoiced with the correct terms, so that is the work that has happened over the last three months. Um, and so <clears throat> it was less um, couching that as a success because we're not done yet, Mr. Chairman. What I was trying to do was provide context with what I call fix and fly. So we fixed or starting to fix the problem while also continuing to provide value and results for our 59 communities. Okay, thank you. Ms. Simon? Thank you. So are you, this is still current that you're issuing an RFQ for loan servicing and portfolio management? Is that what's RFQ pending? The RFQ has uh, been issued. Uh, we received responses and now we're evaluating uh, that response and uh, determining next steps. How many responses have uh, you received? We got one, one response. And who might that be? Uh, I don't know under the procurement guidelines whether I'm prepared or allowed to even state who that is, but we did get one firm who responded. Uh, it was an out-of-state firm, so I'll say that. Wow. Okay. So it's not E and Y. They did not bid. No. Okay. Are they still doing work? Um, yes, they are. With regard to this, and you have a a contract with them yes. that went through the board of control. Yes. And what's the end date for that contract? If you know the term. I of believe it? the contract was um, for one year. It was extended, but there's a limited amount of funding, so that there's no way the funding will last a year. Uh, but I believe it's open for a year. So in terms of sending out the servicing aspect of the, our loan um, program, what, what is the expectation for that company to, what kind of um, duties would that company perform specifically? Yep. Um, once we get into the next phase of procurement, and, and uh, we'll determine that, but essentially loan servicing RFQ uh, asked that a firm collect monies on our behalf and engage the borrowers. Uh, and so what we've got to really design is how does that company intersect with our data? Uh, and then how do we, what are the expectations we have with respect to them if they were awarded the, the contract to engage our borrowers in terms of collections? So <clears throat> it's really the servicing collection of, of monies on behalf of the county. And so they would get a cut of what they collect, or they well, would get a fee paid to them? How, what's we, the expectation? We haven't gotten to the point where okay. they have uh, articulated their, in specificity, what their uh, payment structure would be. But my guess is most of these firms work on a, a per loan fee, and then, you know, they get paid uh, uh, 
a fee per loan, and then some kind of uh, base fee to cover a, cover operating expenses. So that is TBD. And this would include collections or more just servicing and maintaining servicing and to maintaining. make sure that the the borrowers are in compliance and following their schedule of repayment? That's correct. Working with our internal loan portfolio manager, the collections we would con probably continue to use a firm like David Douglas once it got to the point of 90 days or, or older. Hey, hey. We just don't have the capacity or don't want to be doing this in-house with a couple um, oversight, with yeah. a couple people overseeing this? The, the, uh, the executive has made a judgment and directed that we outsource, issue an RFQ for outsourcing, mm -hmm. which we've done. Now mm -hmm. we have to get back to him with a recommendation of how we go forward, given the response that we got, and then we'll go from there. But that is his initial inclination, uh, which I support and... So you're asking detailed questions that have not yet been determined yet. Okay, I, I, and what what and I don't mean to, to I don't want to dig down deep into to why you know we're in the boat we're in is that because nobody was assigned to loan collections or just um, what 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 and, and you came in you know you're relatively new at this point but historically what's been is there did people leave the department no. that were handling that and now there was a void and a vacancy. No. I, say there are a couple of symptoms of it. Uh, turnover and just a lack of focus on it. Um, and lack of, we were understaffed in this area, candidly. How many people do you think we need to staff up? If I'm sure you looked at this with the help at E&Y, how many people yeah. we would need in-house to do uh, this? We probably need two or three. We've got one doing it currently, and there's a lot of processing work and, and filing work that wasn't done correctly. And so in our budget, we will put forward a recommendation for some additional staff to... What kind of paperwork? UCC filings or what? What are you well, just thinking about? Loan files, mm -hmm. you know, okay. all of the closing docs, you know, the entering the information correctly uh, into our loan management system portfold. Okay, so so what I'll be looking at, and I know the executive wants to, to outsource this, but as we go through um, this process in this committee and otherwise, I'm going to be looking to see if we could be more efficient and accomplished having this in-house because I've seen it go different ways, you know, the AG's office uh, outsources to attorneys and, you know, they just have a gazillion loans. I'm not sure we couldn't do it um, ourselves in here, but I'll be looking forward to seeing what you um, come up with. Okay. That's for your final determination. S uh, staying on the loans and back to Mr. Miller, uh, you're going to present us with, and as a matter of fact, why don't we just, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Simon was not here when we started the meeting, so I'm not going to vote this out today. We have another committee meeting. We're going to get something assigned next week, or, I mean tomorrow, so we're going to meet next Monday uh, at the same time. So why don't we wrap this up with a nice bow uh, by next Monday? How many loans are out there? If we have it 100%, which I think is what you indicated, we now know of the 242, Mr. Miller asked to divide into three subcomponents. Um, those relatively within your sphere of time being here, those that precede your sphere, but before, uh, or I mean, after the, uh, the start of the new county government uh, six years ago plus, and then those that preceded those three groups. Is that a, a fairly, uh, so we can have that 242. And if that number jumps to 247, when you actually get down with it or 250, that's okay. I didn't mean to hold it to 242. That was just the number that, that I had heard yep, no. uh, being so presented. Me, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. So within- I got a whole bunch. So you might, you know, uh, 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 we'll wait till I get done summarizing. And then, so with that, if it's 242, we could go and pull every one of those 242, and we now have 100% paperwork to support that loan someplace in the county. In some way. Yeah, there's some paperwork, correct. We have a documentation that says that I borrowed money and the county lent us money, and we've got a piece of paper from some borrower that indicates what that file looks like. Because yes. I heard this rumor that we didn't have paperwork to support all of the loans that are out there in some way, shape, or form. And yeah, we've gone and scanned, archived documents, so from different locations where the county has been. We've done an electronic review. There's been an engagement with the uh, borrower. So there is some piece of paper that corresponds with these loans, yes. And that piece of paper, if Ms. Simons is an attorney, if she, if she was the person, not personally because I know the uh, conflicts, but let's assume that uh, an attorney uh, 
was handed that file and said, okay, go collect. They are going to have a document that's going to be sufficient to go out and say, uh, you owe us this money. Here it is. So we've got yeah. documentation to support. As a starting point, yes. There, David Douglas has come back in certain instances and said, you know, there's pieces of information that are missing or that I still need in order to go collect. And so he's identified where those gaps are. And so those have been or in the process of being filled. Okay, so the 242 does not have 100% documentation if we pull randomly uh, file number 132 we would not automatically guarantee that we would find everything that uh, that somebody who is processing that loan well, would, be, would be able to answer it i wouldn't answer for what david douglas and his firm needs to execute collections but i would tell you that for each of these 242 loans there is data and paperwork illustrating that a loan was indeed made Okay, David Douglas is on the collection side. What we're talking about to Ms. Simon is you're actually looking to hire somebody uh, to do this function or the county executive is, and it just seems a little pre not significantly premature. If we can't give them, that person, whoever we hire, uh, a file that could, could actually do everything they need to with that loan, it's pretty tough for me to expect that person then to be able to collect on it and be part of the the regular reoccurring payments if we don't if we can't give them a file. And once we get into that level of conversation, that probably will be one of their questions where they'll want to oh, sample. I, I don't think we'll it probably it, it's yeah. it's if uh, if you're asking me to do something and I can't you can't give me the the tools or the on all hundred or two hundred forty two, yeah. it's tough to ask them to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess I'm leaning in the same direction as Simon's as far as the questioning. If I understand it correctly, we have the ability to qualify whether this is a quality person that, or firm that we're going to loan money to. We have the ability to analyze the security interest that we're going to be taking out for that loan. We have the ability to understand what the collateral is and, and recording uh, a UCC filing or a, a mortgage, uh, regardless of what position we're in. We have the ability to look at whether we're the secondary versus the prime but we don't have the ability at that point in time then to collect the money. It just seems seems like we've done everything that, that you do is almost in a banking situation, and then we're jobbing out that last piece. It's, it's just I, I'll wait to see when that, when that comes forward, being asked to, uh, to pay for that. One thought I have is that the prime in most of these cases has stood up here or we've had the presentation that the prime is the number one position, and they are looking at us to, to either be the closing piece or the last piece of that, that loan. Perhaps the prime, who is very interested in collecting their money, uh, if it be the bank or whoever it is that's on the front end of that, uh, could act as that collection piece and paying them a fee because I guarantee they've got a lot of leverage. Oh, I see what you're saying. The, the, the you're already, that's in the they, they're place. already collecting their money front on the front of these loans. Why not? I would much rather pay... And just for this example, I'd much rather pay PNC an additional quarter point because they're already collecting all the rest of the money on the loan uh, to collect our piece and just redistribute it to us. And uh, so I just throw that out as a concept. Um, next uh, item uh, that we uh, we have other questions, Mr. Miller, I, I assume you do. Uh, you come already question. prepared, and Ms. Simon does too, uh, un or unless, unless there's anything else on the loans. So. I have one more question about loans, is simply sure. as to whether we have outstanding loans that are older than 2007. I'm sure. uh, we do. We Mr. do. Mr. Chairman, Director, how many? Uh, at this time, what we know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 55. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have four categories. Let's just, there we go. We'll, yes, four okay. categories. Please identify everything before 07. Okay, so let me just make sure I got these categories. Within my term, which is 18 months, uh, within the current government, 2011 to 2016, uh, commissioner, former governor, government, and then 2007, those are four categories. Well, yeah, 07, for some reason, that was a cutoff, and I didn't didn't know why, but that was a cutoff. We just went use. back 10 years. I mean, you could go back. I mean, some of these loans, you know, are, this program is 30-something years old, so we went my, back to... My, my mortgage is 20, 20 years old, and I guarantee they aren't going to forget after my, my payments after after 10 years. Like, they, they expect me to pay the entire 20 years of the mortgage. So so if, if we have people that owe us money, I'd like to know if that other 55 are in there. I assume is is what the question is being asked. Absolutely. 
I didn't mean to put words in your mouth, but I assume that's what you're asking. Yeah. Definitely. You're right, Mr. Chairman. And then all those questions that I asked about the, to the seven pre, also follow to the pre. Were any of them convicted? Were any of them involved with corruption? Were any of them? Because I really would like to know if, if that was part of what, what our loan portfolio made up of was, was part of, of our lending money in the previous prior corruption scandal. If, if we had that, if that was any kind of taint whatsoever that we had, it should come out glaringly out of those loans. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Miller, any more on the loans? No. Moving to the next subject. Sorry. <laughs> Take you off the hook on that one. Okay. Uh, turning to other matters, first of all, I'd like to uh, commend you and the administration for including the sustainability piece. I, I think that's, uh, that's an important element and, and that it's... Uh, it's very important that sustainability be seen, if done right, as a way of fostering economic development and not a hindrance to economic development. So, so I like that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> second, I have a question as to whether, whether this document here, the one that talks about actions in 2016 and 17 and, and then future actions, is that... Uh, Proposed to become a part of the plan, or, or is that kind of uh, a separate informational document? But it's not part of the plan. Um, it's not part of the plan. It was just we created specifically. Uh, I think, Mr. Miller, do you one of your question? Maybe it was uh, Mr. Jones's question about what are some of the results that align with the plan? The future actions are embedded in the plan, so um, I, we wanted to illustrate that a lot of things are already happening in terms of getting components of this plan done. And so when you take these two columns in combination, you see that it's not just a plan, but a live document that is being implemented. The one suggestion that I would make for an amendment is uh, this is a five-year plan, but I would like to see uh, it include a, a list of some specific things that we hope to accomplish within the first year of the five years and how we plan to measure them. Okay. <clears throat> and Mr. Chairman, with that, I have no further questions at this time. Ms. Simon, any uh, general questions on what was gone? And, and I too will commend you on a lot of hard work, a lot of lifting that needs to be done. Uh, and to um, Mr. Tuma's comments that economic development, unlike the other uh, county governments, this is actually incorporated right into the preamble of our, uh, of our charter. So it is something of a high nature. Uh, and I, um, I applaud Mr. Tuma for actually also making the comments. If you're having quarterly meetings, please just, all you got to do is send us out and tell us where they are. If they're going to be in Poughkeepsie, I don't want to go to New York, but if there are here, any place in the county. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure to invite you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I, so you well, not right necessarily me, but, but the, yes, council, I mean, yeah, the, the council person yeah. that, that, that's specifically assigned to that, I think they would love to be there. Yeah. The courting um, meetings are always held in this room, so people come down. Oh, they're always held here? So far, and that's a good question, should we rotate them around the county? Yes, so we'll absolutely. Think about that. They okay. should be in... Yeah, they should be in Solon, they should be in Strongsville, they should be in South Euclid. Okay. Um, and I think it, I, I actually, I, I know it was uh, early on, I also advocated we have a county council meetings out there, but the, the recording was, was, was difficult. Your meetings don't have to be recorded. Uh, I think it would make a phenomenal statement out there. And then, if you end up going into Solon, for example, or Glen Willow, uh, then if you want to invite your contemporaries in Summit County to try and smooth out some rough feathers, they're only they're two miles away at that point in time and invite them over. So I think it, I would highly encourage you to have remote meetings and even have some in the evenings to talk about stuff like this. Uh, I think it would be very, very, very helpful out there. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, ma'am. We've already been doing it with the, in my district. So, oh, with, with, yeah, the, yeah, so just have to yeah, invite in. We've had mm. Beechwood and we're going out to the communities. But I think that what Mr. Toomer was talking about is there is times when economic development sits down with uh, communities, and uh, he's just advocating to, to know you've been doing it on probably a, a lot. But yeah, you, I've you've been, been doing yours on, the, on an affirmative basis. But if right. there's a 
an ad hoc meeting that uh, you're coming together, feel free to, to invite the, sure. the, the county council folks. Uh, uh, not to be Budinskis, but just to listen uh, out there uh, from, from that standpoint. Um, I think that, is that what you were alluding to? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yeah. And what's the status? I know the Skills Up program has been going now for about two and a half months, I think it is. Yeah. Yes, sir. David here. How many jobs and how many companies? Quick, have been uh, quick report. I've got hot off the presses. Your, uh, okay. Number of companies that, uh, that are actually have received dollars and then number of employees that that relates to. I'm going to ask David uh, Feinerman, who's our Workforce Innovation Director. So uh, I get a uh, weekly report on the activity of Skill Up, so he'll kind of share with you some of the highlights from this report. Okay. Right. Maybe once a quarter you could send those to us as, in a summarized version. Sure. Super, and send it to, uh, to, our county, uh, to our staff, and then they'll just forward it to us. That'd be fantastic. Great. Uh, members of the committee. Uh, so uh, let me just give a very high-level overview of Skill Up and then give a report of where we are to date. So we launched the service in uh, February, February 1st. Um, again, this is a service for businesses. We are treating businesses as customers and partners. And what we are doing is providing three distinct things. First, expert advice. Businesses need help defining and documenting what they need in terms of their workforce needs and their skill requirements. Many businesses, including large organizations, have a very difficult time really defining what they need. So that's the first thing. And we're doing that for free with no commitment. Second, once the businesses identify what their needs are, we determine whether training is an appropriate intervention. And if it is, we create a custom training solution for them. It's a roadmap. You know what you need, but you're not sure where the technical training providers are, who provides credentials to test this knowledge and skill attainment. How do we create on-the-job training tasks so that the person who is uh, employed and training can demonstrate that they've learned and can apply what they've learned? So that roadmap is the first piece, and then a list of providers for technical instruction and credentialing. This expertise is worth thousands of dollars, and we are providing that, uh, again, at no charge to the employers with a commitment that we'd like them to allow us to speak with them once per quarter to see if they've been uh, utilizing this information, implemented it, whether there's some uh, issue that the business is having in actually um, training their workers. The third piece is if they want us to manage the process, we've created a highly structured training process. It's similar to apprenticeship. The worker gets wage increases during the training period, there's a credential attached to it. The employer's paying for it. It's a very structured process. We can help them manage that and provide financial incentives. In that case, we will court, help the employer coordinate with the provider. We will coach the employee and provide reimbursement for, again, approved out-of-pocket costs. So those three distinct things, I'm sorry? <laughs> what kind of costs? I'm sorry. Yeah, so yes. the cost of the training itself. Mm -hmm. and for the in-training wage increases. Yeah. So there are businesses out there that historically have not supported their workers and paid for training. For example, um, there are long-term care facilities that we're working with, and I'll, I'll go through some specifics. Long-term care facilities that say they can't find nursing assistance, but they have never paid to train their workers. You're talking about housekeeping staff, dietary nutrition aides, people that make $8.50 an hour, so $17,000 a year, and the employers historically have said, we want you to go out without our commitment and pay $1,000 of your $17,000 that you earn annually. You go pay for that training, and if you do, maybe we'll consider you. And what we've said is, business, if this is a need for you, then you should pay for it, and we will help support you in those efforts. We'll help you with a roadmap, we'll help you define what you need, help you create a roadmap, and then help coordinate it and financially incentivize you to do it in this way where the worker benefits and the, benefit, uh, the business benefits as well. So to date, we have uh, six individuals who are training. Again, this is a very new thing that businesses have not trained people historically in many cases. Now they are. Six people are training. Uh, we have three people who went from dietary nutrition and housekeeping to state-tested nursing assistant. 
the average wage increases in taxable earnings are uh, for two of the individuals $2,000, one of the individuals $3,000 in annual taxable earnings. Uh, total number of companies in this case are four. So uh, one business has three workers and then the other uh, three businesses have uh, one worker each. We have a human resources uh, individual, uh, an IT person, and a uh, yoga instructor, which is actually a really interesting business. It's a nonprofit entity. This is their first employee. They've used historically independent contractors. Because of our service, they have restructured their entire business model now to hire one worker, and they're about to scale to 10. And they're going to employ people who are going to be making $27 per hour who can open up their own yoga studios and provide this work uh, individually directly with this company. So total annualized tax, uh, taxable wage increases to date for the six workers, $53,000 total with an average or a median of about $3,000 per worker. Um, one uh, thing around the uh, sort of an industry snapshot, we have roughly uh, 10 or 15 industries that we've seen that we've been uh, supporting. So we have a calling program. We've contacted 1,400 employers to date. About half of those have responded back to our request to serve them. And of those individuals, nearly 70% have expressed an interest in receiving services. Slowly, we're trying to get them to actually move because we're asking them to invest time and money into solving their workforce problems. That process is slower, but we are getting market traction. And um, we're learning very quickly that messaging is extraordinarily important. So the message you heard today about what services we provide is version 2.0 of our materials. We were very uh, technical and jargony in our ver first version of our messaging. This new version you heard is uh, version 2.0. Okay. Well, it's a startup business. Um, yep. As I think I indicated, it when, when you started and you came in here in February, or actually before that, um, if I was an accounting employee, I would definitely be taking advantage of it in my own business, but I, I cannot do that. So um, you have five employees, I think, in that group, in your group, or you uh, did? When as I recall, uh, just remembering what I saw when I saw the, the individuals sitting out there on, the, on day one. There's 18 members, uh, five of them, uh, sorry, six of them are employees, uh, so five FTEs, one intern full-time, and two interns who are on contract part-time. So, okay, so roughly five, six people, um, knowing it's a startup business, four companies out of 1,400 is not a very good track record, as, uh, as I'm sure you're three uh, at this point, but uh, we'll, I'm more than willing to give it time um, because I think it's a it's a innovative process, uh, but I will be asking every quarter as to where those numbers are and what they're moving to uh, because that's a lot of a lot of staff on our side and to get uh, less than what less than a third of a percent success that's that's a fairly low success rate but I'll, I understand it's it's a new program and you got to get it on the streets I don't consider programs uh, in my own life uh, till so you get out there about a year two, um, and year one they taste it, year two they start to enjoy it, and hopefully uh, by then it's starting to move. Uh, so I wish you all the best because I think that it's got some merits. Uh, so, Councilman, just one point of clarification. The measure of success here is not providing dollars to the businesses. The measure of success is the service provision to the companies and employer commitments for them to uh, trust the county to deliver expert advice and have them commit to training workers and investing in their workers. The financial incentive is a carrot. Yeah, I don't think I was using, I don't think I used that as a success. I, I thought it, I heard four companies and you had 1,400 touch points. So we've, we've so that's, that, we uh, have yeah. gotten commitments to uh, manage the training process and, and provide a financial incentive for six workers which right. includes four companies. Right. But employers that are uh, committing to us providing expert advice and um, and moving forward on, a, on creating customized training plans, currently we have 60. Oh, okay. So 
people are start, uh, businesses are starting to trust the county in terms of us providing a service to them that they did not have before. I, I, again, I will still say the same thing. If I sure. if I was uh, if I didn't have a conflict, I would be I'd be pushing you hard uh, <laughs> from that standpoint because the concept makes sense. Whether or not you can get there to get people to to buy into it is a different question. Yep. Um, I just have a question. Yes, on this. Do you do you um, have any limits? Um, the size of a company that can utilize this, what I see as consulting work. Is uh, there? Do you have any parameters, or anybody can can sign up and you you'll talk to them at least to see if they'll. Yes, businesses will be of all sizes in any industry. Obviously, we have as a county and as a state, we have target industries, uh, but we are getting calls and requests from businesses in a variety of industries. I, I mentioned a, a nonprofit yoga studio. We have dry cleaning businesses that are saying we don't know how to train workers, extermination companies. Businesses want to grow in the county, but they need capacity, resources, and expertise. We need to provide a consulting service to help them define what they need and create a roadmap. Then if they want us to manage the process and put parameters around uh, giving them money, that's, uh, again, a third piece of this. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Uh, back to uh, Mr. Carter. Uh, you, you just mentioned that Jumpstart had a big event, and, and more just a curiosity. Uh, you said you had a payout. Does that mean a payoff, or uh, that we were going to get a payoff of the entire amount of money we loaned Jumpstart? Uh, it'll be a significant amount. We're still uh, with uh, our legal team finalizing those negotiations of what the payout will be to this uh, county. Uh, but I think it's going to be pretty significant. It will have some kind of residual interest in Jumpstart on an ongoing basis, uh, but it'll be uh, a seven-figure payout to the to the county. Okay, so we're <clears> gonna get, th what did we loan them initially, 2.5? Yeah, there were two different loans. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, it was over $3 million. Yeah, as I recall, Mr. Leach did say that they were hoping for an event, and uh, as they say in their business, and that uh, he stood up there and indicated that he would be happy to pay us off. Uh, and I, the numbers, at least being reported in the paper, were astronomical as mm -hmm. far as what I think 80 million bucks or something like that that yes. they cleared. So uh, it seems to me I, I would have no problem with him paying us off all of them, and we can use that money other places. That would be a no nice question. thing. Um, <clears throat> Any other uh, questions out there? Well, um, I apologize that not uh, not getting it voted out, but it will not change the date in which this would be going forward. Uh, it is my intention to, to vote this out uh, next week on uh, next Monday for second reading suspension uh, at the uh, August 8th meeting. Is that the date? Okay. Yeah. Okay, just one... Uh, uh, Note there, Mr. Chairman. I won't be present at that meeting. I'll be on vacation uh, that week, August 8th, fortunately. So I, I look out there and I see three very quality people that yeah, would be no more question. than happy to, to step in your shoes, at least temporarily, on the left side and one on the right side. So, uh, all right. Okay. Very good. Any other? Thank you. Okay, thank you. And, and if uh, so, if we can get all the loan, I don't know who's going to be bringing the loan stuff to us. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get that. I saw a volunteer. You. I saw a hand go up quickly. Can you, yeah. <laughs> So we're, we're in good shape. All okay. right. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Uh, does anybody sign in in regard? Is there any miscellaneous business? Anybody sign in for public comment unrelated to the agenda? Uh, no one is signed in, Mr. Chair, but now that Ms. Simon is here, you do have a quorum. Do you want to oh. approve the minutes? Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's why you're doing that important thing, and I'm screwing up with this. And yes, uh, there were minutes from the July 10th meeting. Does everybody have a chance to look at the minutes? Yeah. Everybody saw it? Everybody. Uh, been, been moved to adopt, seconded. seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Thank you. I, great, great catch, Jenny. Thank you much. Uh, and uh, this meeting is adjourned.